love you, won't you tell me your name? Hello, I love you, let me jump in your game. Hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? Hello, I love you, let me jump in your game. Hello, as we say here on this hosting show here at uh, Stockholm Furniture Fair. Hello and welcome this wonderful afternoon. Um, we have a, 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 an interesting dis discussion today talking about meeting rooms, creativity, how to actually meet another person uh, and how to do that. So we're going to be talking about case snapshots, about passion, about vision and about communication. My name is Stefan Nilsson and I will be your host this afternoon. Yay, Stefan. <laughs> thank you, indeed. Thank you. You're so welcome. how are things with you? Things Is it a good afternoon? Great, thank you. Yeah? Yeah, I just threw on the old old thing, you know, make so, you look bad. So how's communication working between you and I? How's I think it it's working? working pretty good so it far. It is working so far? It's yeah. been 40 seconds. We haven't had any fights. Uh, not yet. Looking we will good? see how that goes, though. All right. We will see how it goes. Um, I'm going to welcome up on stage the first two guests uh, for this show. It's going to be from Combine, Anders Moschen and Peter Hoffman. Welcome up on stage. Welcome boys, welcome boys. So Combine, who are you? We are an architect firm uh, who work in a cafe. You work in a cafe? A cafe sounds strange. Why do you work in a cafe and not in a proper office? Wh why should you work in a proper office? Uh, don't you do proper work in an <laughs> office? Don't you just drink coffee in a, in a coffee shop or something? Uh, yeah, but you can do both, I think. So what do you think, uh, uh, Anders, what do you think about meetings and, and coffee and creativity? Do you have like the ultimate solution of how things will progress? Well, we, we have an investigation that we are uh, very interested in between uh, this, what happens between the private and the public. And we think is in this time with the internet and so on, people working, that uh, this uh, zone between public and private will be uh, in change and we investigate this. So, so we, we inv more investigate that we have the proper solution, of course. Traveling around the world that I have, I've of course seen this uh, in various places. But how new is this to Sweden? Your solution of the combined office and coffee house? Uh, it, it, it is an investigation and a research. So we, we haven't seen so many places like this and we try to develop it as a kind of research project to <coughs> not say it should be fixed and we try to somehow work with it. Of, co of course, we have seen this uh, coffee people working at coffee places, but somehow we may, in our investigation now, how to maybe professionalize this, this uh, area a bit and, and see what we can do to, to construct a more, more uh, uh, worked out thing. So that's because how new is this? I mean, the authors of Paris and Montmartre, weren't they like sitting at the bistro writing their books and novels? And now, uh, I mean, this is how new is this? Well, it's, it's old, but we, we take up this type of culture and try to find another type of uh, set for this. And can peop and uh, th this has to do with the private and the public. And uh, can you be, when you're sitting in bistro, writing your things, you, you're more like, um, yeah, you're private. But in, in our case, with the working club, it's like more in between. You're both private, but you're also a member of this club. And, uh, and this... Uh, we think that's a very interesting uh, situation that you are in some kind of of uh, uh, small society, but also private. So, how many are members of your club? It has been about 130 members, but now it's it's pendling between 35 and 45 something and continuously. Okay, you uh, have some uh, some images and and slides to show me as well. So, yeah. what what you what will you show us? Yeah, we show a little bit about uh, our concept where tips should we try this one instead yeah this one okay, works better thank you thank you yes this is our place coffees and uh, uh, it's very important that we are now in the street level having our, our somehow place in the street level and uh, and to have very direct access to, to those 
who want to meet. It is creating a meeting place of, of different aspects. And uh, yes. Uh, and uh, the question we try to investigate is this question about between, is it something between private and public somehow? And uh, this has, of course, to do with the internet, and y you can work almost everywhere, but uh, then you may be, when you work at home, uh, you feel a bit lonely. You want also a physical, somehow, uh, uh, kind of uh, setup. So are you targeting more the, the lonely worker, the freelancer, so to say? Is that your main target audience? Well, everybody who's interested in somehow to, to, to work in, in a somehow interesting place. It could be also people working at a big firm coming to us to have another situation. So it's, uh, it's different. The, very, very the reasons are very private, but uh, the, the, the some situation is, is what we construct. And different people, of course, a lot of freelancers. And, and uh, in this, uh, in architectural uh, theory, we have called it, it's like the third space, something not, not the public and not the private, but something in between. And what is this uh, third space is something what we inv investigate. So in, in our case, that is what we try to develop uh, some kind of work club and, and see how, how that can <coughs> work. And, uh, and we call our place coffees. And it's, it's here in Stockholm, Shadowsgatan on Söderman. And uh, this is a layout of the, of the place where uh, between the private office of ours, we are, have our architecture firm in this private part, uh, and, uh, and the public uh, is the street. And what happens in between is what uh, area of interest. And uh, so this is a street, and the street is, of course, public, and, and somehow. Uh, you, you come in and, and in when you walk in a normal office you somehow have this border line here to, to somehow s step in and we try to diffuse that a little bit. So, so the, the, the coffee shop is also like a, what do you call it, uh, 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 lobby, it's yeah, kind of lobby, lobby or, mm. or, 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 or reception area. Yeah. Reception yeah. area, yeah, yeah mm. of course. This is, uh, you see the, the coffee shop when you come in and, and uh, behind the coffee shop is uh, one of our conference room where you can have uh, meetings and uh, book for meetings. So do you have like single rooms as well if you want to have like a meeting or is it all, all in public? Yeah, you, you see one of the meetings room where the question mark is, is there? Okay, so that's a glass window is it? Yeah, it's a glass yeah. door you can somehow yeah. close and, mm. and drag a curtain in front of So that. that room you have to book? Yeah. And, uh, this week we have uh, uh, a guest company uh, having a shop in this. So this is also a, a thing we create kind of infrastructure of different types of meetings. And, and this is one type of thing we have is one week shop in, in coffees this week. And uh, so this, uh, this can be changed. So kind of infrastructure of different types of meetings. And this, uh, yeah, this is Hemliga Butiken secret shop this week. Please come and visit. Very nice things to see. And you have this uh, semi-public -pu area where, where the, the club members are. And <coughs> of course, we are interested in uh, how this interface between the, the public cafe and the work club is. And we started to try out with this uh, studio plans bound rope, this rope, and, and see if that was an efficient way of somehow creating a, a, a different zone. And, and during this one year, it was working perfectly, actually. So, so I, I don't understand. What's behind the velvet rope? It's a, it's a, it's a club where where people. Okay, come so in. on the other side, you uh, have on, the on, on, on this side is a public cafe. And okay, the okay. Other, other side okay. is is a and work club. And you pay a fee to to be seven seven hundred crowns a month to be a member of this uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, working club, and it's of kind of professionalizing this working at a cafe uh, type of, of thing. And here you don't have to order a coffee, and you can sit the whole day if you want to. So, so this kind of make it more uh, work friendly for for those who want to work. It's a very concentrated uh, working area. Also, people come uh, and say they have get lots of things done because it's good concentration compared to home or whatever. And here, you, this is some of our uh, guests or, or uh, members working, having meetings, more meetings also in this area. And you can also you you 
collect all the things we have in the, in the work club to this card and you can somehow pay with the card and get the discount and you can also send your, your prints to, to, to our printer and, and you drag your card so and you also book your rooms and stuff like that so we try to also create this uh, uh, system uh, not only the space but also on a virtual system yeah it's like kind of infrastructure both physical uh, and somehow uh, functionalized with this so will we at least I think you have like a good solution to to like a meeting space but do will, will we need offices well what happened if all coffee houses took on this idea I mean uh, <coughs> maybe the the offices is a, is a little bit old concept and we need a new concept and, and we have been having the same offices for you know 100 years now maybe we we need to change a little bit but so, we so we more, more coffee less uh, office well we have our office in here because we we have to have tables to work at, so we have our private office, which maybe function a little bit more like an a, a office, because uh, uh, we have to have our computers and uh, big drawings and so on, stuff like that, and so, and have, so we also have our uh, private part here. Thank you. I think it's going to be uh, interesting to see how this evolves. I know we're going to have a few other guests on board on this stage to see, to continue the discussion about the the public space and, and working. Um, do you have any more slides there? Oh well, no, that is it. Well, this is uh, this is yes. Ah, okay. This is it. Now you're done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, done. Thank you very much. So, so Indrid, what do you think about coffee and office? I think it's cool, and they're just around the corner from my house, actually. Okay. So I, I've been there. You've mm. been there. How cool did, did am I? <laughs> How well, cool the am India, I? The, the, the trick question is: Did you work there or just? I have did coffee? not work there. Oh, well, there yeah, you go. There I you did go. not bring so my cheating. organ there yeah, and yeah, sit yeah, there yeah, and play nice music. That's cheating. Well, thank you very much, guys. Yeah. Um, I think we should bring on our next guest, uh, our first international guest on stage, which is Robert Stadler. <laughs> Water bottles keep on tending on falling on the floor. Um, so how are things, Robert? Welcome to Sweden. Thank you. Yeah. Good things are this fine. is your first time in Sweden, is it? It so is actually. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you uh, handle the weather? Isn't it too cold for everyone? Well, I'm born in Austria, so I'm. Mm. It's okay. You're <laughs> handling. You're managing. So what do you think about the guy's idea with the uh, office combined with the coffee house? What do you think about that? It's a very nice idea. I think it's. Uh, I, I. I'm not astonished that this kind of idea is born in, in Northern Europe and uh, I live in Paris and I, 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 have, I think it would be very difficult to have a concept like that in Paris for Why the moment. Is Why is that? Ah, because in Paris uh, uh, I think most of the places that are designed mm -hmm. where you can feel the intervention of a designer they become very easily elitist places and I think that's different in, in, in other parts of the world. Uh, I started thinking about the, uh, the British sort of clubhouses where the gentlemen and, and the women were uh, excluded. I mean, isn't there a risk about the exclusivity as you're, you're, as you are talking about here, Robert? It's, uh, it's very cheap. It's very cheap. Yeah. Seven hundred kroner a month. Yeah. That's yeah. Including. That. So that's so you can include anyone basically. Yeah. Do you have like rules on who can be member of your coffee house? Yeah, we also have sometimes also special discount for for people who can't afford it, so they can work for free to to get in more uh, cultural production into, into the area. So we have some kind of... Interesting, so interesting. Well, anyway, so who are you, Robert Stadler? Who Where? are you in this, in this uh, sort of meeting space world? Where, who are you? <laughs> well, I'm a designer, as I said, That's Austrian, good. Paris based. And um, I guess I was invited for uh, for a work I did several years ago, which is called the Pentaphone. A pentaphone. I, I think we have, and we need the clicker back because yeah, Robert yeah, has slides as well. Yeah. There you go. You should click it. The green button means ahead. There you go. So that's the that's the piece. Wha and what is that? The Pentaphone. <laughs> well, it looks it's like an, a phone uh, booth or something. Yeah, it actually looks a little bit like an old phone booth. And uh, what's new about it is that there's no phone in inside anymore because we carry our phones with ourselves today. And uh, so it's, uh, I did that in 2004, quite some time ago. And it's, uh, it's a sort of an isolation space that you can adjust to your height. And it will give you a particular look when you have it on your head. It doesn't mess with your hair, does it? 
Excuse me? It doesn't mess with your hair. Uh, does it? No, it actually gives you a new new hair, <laughs> a, new, a new look. <laughs> is that included? Yeah. You get a new hairstyle after you talked in that. Exactly. Yeah. So so uh, yeah. is that launched on the market yet? Or um, how is that working? It's not a product, actually. We're working on it because we got now we got more and more requests from offices but uh, for the moment it's a uh, it's a like a gallery piece yeah. it's existing but in limited edition mm. but yeah. as a designer yeah uh, one of your roles in this world is to to solve issues solve problems um so so um uh, do you see any meeting problems of today that we actually should address and and find solutions for um yeah, you're right. I think uh, one of our roles is to solve problems, of, uh, but maybe even before is to point out mm. problems. No, mm. and uh, so this work is exactly about that. It's mm. it's in between. Uh, you can see it in a way as a solution, but in the same times, it's also pointing out uh, a problem, and uh, it's pointing out this problem with with uh, with some humor, mm. because when someone has this his head inside of this wooden. Uh, he, he will he will start to have like a wooden head with facets on it. Um, so uh, I think that's the best way to to focus on a problem is when when you you know when you look at it in an ironical way as well. Because because this uh, design is talking about finding your own space, finding your own you know, sort of like shelf where you can actually have your own private conversation, yeah. not in in a public space. So so do we need more of that? Do we need more private spaces? Because if we have see one tendency to have open spaces like the coffee solution, that would be you would need something for us uh, your own. Yeah, I think time. this is the direct uh, reaction to to the open space uh, problem, uh, which is uh, a nice idea. But we all know that in reality, it's very hard to to handle. And so today, how do you actually, work? Do you work in an open space, or, or have you yeah, I actually room? recently had the choice because I, I have a new studio and I, I had the the I had to make this choice if I d if I build walls or not. And actually, I also uh, didn't put any walls there. But uh, it's just because I, I, I'm in such a quick and constant contact with my assistants that I, I wouldn't want to leave a room for each question I have to ask them. So, uh, so it's again an office, an open space. But then something like, like this uh, is, a, is, is a reaction and also can be a kind of solution to that. Because uh, there is a meetings can already be very boring as we know, yes. but what's even more boring is when you are outside of a meeting, but you have to hear the meeting. Mm. You have to hear the others talk, so that's the <laughs> worst. <laughs> that's when you so need the hood, right? Exactly. So yeah, shove the other ones off. <laughs> Get the quiet time. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, that's for the other side, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it's useful in both directions. Is exactly. It? <laughs> it's useful for the others as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th this would be perfect for coffees. We have a uh, look for a solution like this. We didn't find any good but this would be perfect yeah. for because us. what happens well if people start talking on the phone in that sort of open area what happens yeah well do people get yeah, sort of irritated yeah well you have it's more of a private thing some people are not so conscious about the context some are very so so this uh, we have talked a lot about to create something like this but uh, this would be perfect for well us. actually this slide shows it's uh, one of the first time that we, 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 we distributed this piece and it was for a coffee restaurant it's uh, mm. called Carrier Bar mm. in Copenhagen not mm. so far from here mm. Mm. so this was installed there and it's still there actually and works quite well mm. but, but uh, I mean people are really using it how uh, does it work do you have to stand in the corner or can you have uh, like a lot of them in the room and uh, no there's only one uh, yeah. close to the cloak room like like tell you old telephone yeah. cabins yeah. used yeah. to be and then it has this counterweight, yeah. uh, so you can adjust it to mm. your height. And then you just step inside and uh, and talk. Mm. Because but inside but there's the foam and there's the special fabric like for loudspeakers that isolate you from the sound. So so it really works. <laughs> we can have one. It really works. Mm. Uh, Except for it's not on the market <laughs> yet. So maybe someone should build it for you. It really yeah. works. It even works for kids. You yeah. know, see. Uh, okay. <laughs> Quiet kids is that possible? Sorry. Quiet kids is that possible? Well, you it's that they become quiet <laughs> once exactly. you put them inside, yeah. right? So the kids, are, so the kids are still noisy, but you know, as we said, it works both ways. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Did you have any more slides, Robert? Or um, I guess no. no. You're done. Well, uh, thank yeah. you. I think this is a good solution. Um, we're going to talk to some other designers and hear their perspective on <laughs> solutions to to projects like this. So I want to welcome on stage Formas would love Petrus, Jonas, and Jon. Very polite. 
polite. Uh, hello, hello. Aren't they very polite indeed? Very yeah? Polite. Well dressed and well polite. Good boys. Well dressed. Well, well dressed. Well dressed? Yeah, well, sorry, yeah. Well, you're of course always better dressed, of course, indeed. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for that music uh, section there. Oh. They look like sex pistols. So I they do like, se like sex, sex <laughs> pistols? Do you think so? Do you want to be sex pistols? Aren't you like yes. the, uh, the, the cool oh. the, uh, generation of designers, like the young and hip ones, aren't you? Exactly. Yes, yes, yes you are. Uh, cool. uh, form us with love, who are you on this design scene? Uh, we're also a design studio, yep. and we focus on uh, furniture and uh, lighting design. Um, yeah, started based in Stockholm, started five years ago. But still fairly young, you would say. You were uh, awarded newcomer or, or, or uh, shooting stars from the El Deco yes, on Monday? Shooting star, something like yes, shooting stars, so, Yeah, you've been awarded, but that's good. Yeah. Old enough to be awarded, anyway. Um, so you have your, your design studio, and uh, we talked previously about you have three items that sort of solve a meeting situation. Do you exactly. want to start off by talking about the first one? So yeah. <laughs> yes, Peters has the uh, clicker thing. So this is uh, one of the new products that you're launching during this week, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a sound absorber. Um, it, it came from a problem that we had when we were uh, renovating the studio. So that's, uh, that's our studio uh, shown in the picture. And we um, were looking for a different sound absorber and came across a, a company called Treulit, which is a small Swedish company. Uh, but we didn't really find one of their standard products that could fit the studio so that was like the start of doing something new so we decided to visit the factory and it's a really old small factory um, you do the product by wood water and cement and just mix it like a cake and then you cut it into pieces and you probably have seen it in more rough environments not here but in garage and libraries and here we have Ah, taking the same material but increased the size and make a new shape and added color to the process um, and we've also done it with magnets in, in uh, behind of it so you easily can uh, put it up on walls and be like created yourself uh, so it's like a combination of creative meeting and uh, sound absorbing sound absorbents are they still very important for offices uh, I at least in our office, because it's it's like one room. So for us to to have a meeting in the same way we can work in front of the computers, it's it's yeah really important. But if you're adding concrete, that as you mentioned, if you're adding concrete, it sounds like it's going to get hard. I are they really absorbing these sound waves? Y yeah, it is. But it's y you have like different categories of sound absorbers. So this is like a C absorb. Uh, a is the best. So. It's it's quite good, yeah. It's it's really changed the room uh, for us. So sounds nice. And what were the other products that you're also launching this week? Uh, this one is uh, uh, a work in progress. It's uh, it reminds me a bit of, of Robert Robert's idea with the with the phone thing, uh, but but this is uh, mainly a, a lightning uh, armature. Uh, that we will combine um, with, with a sound absorbent. So, the, so the thing is with the, with the this is made of felt panels, and uh, our intention is that the it's going to be uh, made to measure. So you you can uh, if it depending how 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 big the table is. So it's if if it's a conference table, you can easily add more panels to it. So it's like sort of like hovering over a conference table. Is exactly, and with okay. a, a LED-based light source in it. So, so as it is now, it's just a halo. Okay, okay. And Look. this is for Atelier Lichtan. Okay, so it's, it's going to be launched this this week, uh, is it? We showing a couple of prototypes. Okay, at okay. our venue. But it still sounds like I mean, sound isolation and absorbance are the one of the key ingredients for for a good meeting. Is that really so? I, I think it's a it's a problem that is pretty pretty new, or at least for I mean, modern offices is often big open spaces. At least for us, because th both both the 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 wall the trail thing and this one is something that we needed for ourselves. And I think our office is not that 
special. I think there's many people have this problem. But you guys so who are working with an open space will, will, uh, with extra noises, like from, uh, from porcelain or cups or whatever, and, and spoons and cutlery, uh, are, I, cause I think it's really strange that sound and is considered to be noise and damaging. Or, or is it adding a culture or, or, or uh, an ambience? What do you think about the sound isolators? Oh, uh, in in our office? Yeah, or, or in the uh, coffees. Uh, and coffees, maybe they like noises. You know, but people like to sit and maybe have coffee noise and coffee smell and other things. Maybe also some, you know, <coughs> some people put music on when they should work. So maybe this sound can can be good sometimes. Because there are two parallel things here. You have the sound house, the, the quiet office space, <laughs> and the noisy coffee house. Um, so are, are you trying to address the noisiness or are you just uh, telling people to wear headphones <laughs> when they're yeah. checking in? <laughs> well, well, we make it very clear that this, this is a meeting place where you should allow the sound and the meetings more like a noisy moving place than a quiet place. So but what do people tell you? Because it, it must be quite different because I also, my feeling towards renovating offices is that you, you one of the first things you're, you're checking is the sound isolations and, and you know, the, the noise level. Uh, I mean, also if you would look for a new office space or, or a temporary office space, you would ask, how quiet is this? Yeah. But they're not asking that. Well, we, we, m we make it clear what this place is and th then they, they choose how, to how much they are. They shouldn't be a 24 7 working space or more like a complementary mm. space. So if you want quiet, maybe you have another mm. office as well. What about you, Robert? Robert uh, also from an international level, um, what do you think about sound isolation and the absorbance? Is that also happening internationally still? Mm, of course it does. Uh, I just think for what you said that uh, y you just don't have the same kind of conversation in a noisy ambience and in a quiet ambience. Mm. So I think it strongly influences what you're going to so say. We need, we, <laughs> need, we need to have uh, serious conversations in a quiet room and relaxed um, conversation in a noisy room. I think room. that works better, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. okay. That uh, sounds uh, believable and uh, <laughs> nice. I'd like a, a noisy office space. But still, the noise, it, it, it's... Um, I don't know how it is in general, but I experience sometimes that it's a, it's a delicate issue when you do, for example, I design restaurants. And uh, as it's something that you don't see, uh, commissioner are not always open to pay money because it's on one hand something that costs a lot of money if you do it correctly. Mm. But then it's nothing that will you will see. It just gives it a, a general different feeling to the whole ambience. So uh, mm. it's, uh, it's not always to get through with, with the sound uh, insulation ideas mm. in but a in oh Sorry. Uh, in, in our case, we have this uh, quiet uh, uh, conference room that you, you can book if you want to have a quiet meeting. So the infrastructure well that costs extra. For that costs extra. Yeah, that costs I mean. extra. <laughs> you, uh, you get two two hours for free <laughs> <laughs> in the memberships. <laughs> okay. So make sure you use your quiet time efficiently. Yeah. Okay. Petrus, what is your last design for this week that you're doing? Um, this is a bit of a different meeting, perhaps. It's um, a bench that we made together with Uppsala Commune and a Spanish company called Santa and Cole. And uh, we were actually asked by Uppsala Commune to design this bench because they had. Um, they, they had pipes uh, running in the ground with waste uh, water from the heating plant that was warm. And so someone came up with the idea that you could take a bench and you could draw the pipes into the bench and make it warm. Uh, so we got the uh, assignment to design it and uh, together with Santa and Cole, who are experts at benches, uh, we did this that you are only seeing the sketches of now. Uh, but big part of this project was to see how people interact with each other in the outdoors. And uh, of course, in Sweden, it's cold ma most of the time. Like so all the time. All the time, yes. <laughs> and so uh, a warm bench, of course, enables new kinds of uh, behaviors outside. So we actually did a big case study in Gotsunda, which is the area of Uppsala where this is going to be implemented, with the people there and ask them how they are interacting with uh, each other outside. Uh, so that's perhaps not the, uh, the, the kind of meetings uh, we've been talking about before here, but uh, it's also a very interesting space, the outdoors. So do we not, so you actually what you're saying is that we don't use our outdoors uh, enough? In Sweden, no. No. I mean, you get scared if someone talks to you outside. Yeah. Well, we do, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's different though, I mean, and we have a, a big focus on indoor design because we are a 
spending a, mount, a vast amount of hours indoors and outdoors. Some say that that makes us Swedes or Scandinavians different from like Greek people because in Greece you're outdoors and sitting under a, an olive tree and playing chess and being outdoor and eating and singing and, and in Sweden you're spending time indoors yeah, <laughs> looking strange. at furniture. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean if we can find furniture that en enables us to be outside we can mm. meet there as well. So, mm. so do we spend too much time looking at furniture? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <so. laughs> we do. <laughs> do you spend time looking at furniture, Robert? Yeah, I can't avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't avoid it. I guess so. Um, we're going to talk about more about furniture, actually. Uh, but someone has a different perspective of furniture. Uh, I want to welcome up on stage Monica Forster. <laughs> Do you spend time outdoor in the Hell? Do you spend our time outdoor Hell? or just uh, being indoors? I, I spend time yeah. outdoors um, playing chess, eating and singing, just as you yeah. said earlier. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah you vary your time. That's good. Good line. Yeah, good. Time. Do you spend time outdoors, Monica? Um, sometimes. Sometimes. Enough? Are you outdoors enough? Um, no, not really. I, I wish I was more, actually. Yeah. yeah. So do you spend a lot of time in offices and in, and in conference rooms and meeting rooms? Um, well, it happens. I do that, yeah. But I mean, it, it. I think it's a little bit like we've been talking about, all of us here today, that it's starting to loosen up. I, I'm actually right across your coffee's place, mm. my studio is. So I, I really like your concept. I believe in that a lot. So mm -hmm. I think it's more and more like that, that things are starting to dissolve and move into different ways of meetings. And I think it's really interesting that you're bringing it up here also. One of your starting points in your uh, enormous uh, career is uh, addressing the conference room, uh, the cloud. Is that sort of like a graduate uh, project or something when you left school, or is that mm. something that came up later? Or no, it came up later. Okay, okay. Uh, a few years, years but it's later. It's still fairly early yeah. in your career, though. Yeah, yeah. And it sort of set your name on an agenda. D do we have some uh, slides for Monica as well? I think she needs that as well. Because I think you have an animation. Is that of the cloud as well? Or yeah, it it's. Um, I'm going to show. Uh, is it like the next? Yeah, the green. Yeah, I think so. Well, okay. see, start there. So I there. have like a, a small film I want to show. But how does it work? Do I just click on this, or how uh, does it work? I'm looking at the uh, technicians over there, and now we'll see if you. So you, you will have to started. click on that with the. Uh, the mouse. Yeah, exactly. With the cursor. Anyway, so the, but tell us about what the cloud is um, before we actually see the film. Can you do that, Monica? Um, just one second, Johan. You need to click on the picture with the, the mouse. Now, click it. Mm. There. Oh, there you go. Uh -huh, they re have to restart it. So anyway, I, I, can anyway. I can just talk about it. And then we can watch it later. We can watch it yeah. later, absolutely. So anyway, um, uh, the idea, I came up with the idea when I was asked um, oh. a few years back when I to make an, um, an exhibition for Svensk Forum. And um, they wanted uh, me to show moving graphics. And then I thought about that it would be interesting to show this within a really quiet space because, I mean, you're, you're exposed to so many impressions anyway, so it would just be so much, instead of being able to focus on the graphic or the moving graphics. So I designed this like huge big space that you would just go in and that would sort of take away all the other impressions of that you would get. The room, yeah. Of the room. Mm. So, and um, um, the exhibition uh, was, um, um, well, um, it was seen by a company called Snow Crash at the time. That was a very experimental company. And they, uh, we decided together that we would try to put it into production. So we made actually a movable inflatable room that would inflate in um, three minutes. And uh, just everything is sort of within a bag. So you just open the bag if we can get the film started. <laughs> 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 like, are we able to show that? No, it doesn't look like it works. So you open the bag and then yeah. you're taking So we out. open the bag, you take there out. Here, here it goes. All right. You open the bag, you um, take out the textile, 
it's, it's designed so it's supposed to be really, really easy to use. So you don't have to fold everything. You can just sort of push it yeah. in to this bag. And the bag is not bigger than a, um, a golf bag, actually. It only weighs 12 kilos. Mm. So just bring out the textile. Um, you uh, um, just plug it, the in. Yeah. it in. Plug it in. And it inflates by itself in three minutes. Mm. And it's, um, it's mostly thought for an indoor use, mm. really, but um, sort of comes up sort of this imaginary room. So don't go to rock yeah. concert with this. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, uh, there are some people <laughs> who's had parties in it as well. <laughs> but um, anyway, and then I think the nice thing with this is that it's a psychological space more because, I mean, we've also been talking about is it good to hear noises or isn't it good to hear noises? And in this case, it actually combines these two things because it it uh, it's a space which is more a psychological space because you do hear noises because it's just a very thin, thin textile between the outdoor and indoor, but you actually get very much more relaxed meetings by using this, spa uh, this uh, space. Hmm. Um, but isn't it big though? I mean, I, I do believe on the uh, mobility that we are actually now in a mobile world. Um, yeah. You had like room for like 20 people in there. Yeah, I know, but the, the nice thing with this is that it really adapts to the space it's in. I mean, it's, it is when you inflate it, it's like 20 square meters, but the textile is made um, in, in a sort of, it's called like a ripstop nylon. So it, it doesn't, if it gets like a little scratch, mm -hmm. it stops because the textile is woven in squares. Right. So, and so it w if you inflate it in a room, it would just adapt to this room, even though the room is smaller actually than 20 mm. square meters. I think mm. it's a clever solution to the uh, need of a meeting space. But you have other thoughts of meeting spaces as well. We talked about that previously as well. Yeah, if it's I can. We see if it's other right. kinds of meeting places. Yeah, exactly. there you go. <laughs> but because anyway, we, we I think it's been a quite interesting discussion to listen to. I mean, every peop everyone has their view and, you know, well. Their perspective of their things. Their yeah. perspective mm -hmm. of things, exactly. And I think Robert were talking about um, solving problems, sort of, that, that, that's one of the, the main tasks of the designer to do that. Um, and uh, this was something I thought about when I was actually, I was um, on uh, the way with the car, just going to buy something outside of Stockholm in the suburbs. I was going into to, uh, the Galleria there. And, uh, and the, the Galleria is actually kind of a meeting space today and it's also dissolving like in a public space but also but it is a space where people actually go and meet so I thought it was really interesting this could just be I don't want to point any Galleria out so we just <laughs> delete it blurred it so um, anyway this was the entrance to that Galleria I thought it was really interesting I showed that to uh, someone who works in my studio, he's from Taiwan, and he said, my God, I would never dare to enter this mm. place. And it's quite interesting that, that this is a place where people actually meet, and it looks like this. Um, this is a, a place that is just placed just beside. It's the cultural house and the library in this, in this place. And this is the entrance of that. And it, of course, it looks much, much nicer. The library is inside, which is also a meeting space. It's just people, you know, working with the computers, reading a magazine, and so on. Uh, this is the, the only meeting place in the Galleria, which is the taco bar, which <laughs> I found <laughs> quite interesting. Very nice theme yeah, there. Yeah, uh, very nice theme. And that theme was sort of the coziest place in the whole is. Galleria. Mm. And this was their waiting area. I mean, not. That this was like the best waiting area in the whole Garia, also where people meet, they sort of interact with each other. Uh, doesn't look that, that nice to me. Um, so anyway, I just you know, thought about what, what would happen, you know, this is like an overview of, of uh, this, this area. What would happen, this is the place of the Galleria, as this is the cultural house. What would happen if we would just, instead of building them beside each other, just put the cultural house in the Galleria instead? And then um, 
we could just take some clouds and put them in this Galleria. Cloud is then, of course, the, your mobile. My mobile like, yeah, rooms, yeah. yeah. And so um, when people would visit the Galleria, they would just, you know, pass in, go through some clouds, maybe pass by the library, and and um, while they were like buying something, and actually maybe go into some of these clouds and think about if they really want to buy this sweater or not, you know, <laughs> if it's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> So maybe this sort of combination would actually be quite interesting instead of sort of separating these two things. So this was uh, something that was in the gallery. They were really proud of that they had like 32,000 square meters of shopping. Mm. That was something that they were really, really proud mm. of. Mm. And this was like the biggest shopping place mm. in, the, in the sort of the, the, the region. The yeah. region. Mm. So I thought, th why, you know, let's just change that and maybe we make that into the biggest cultural mm. uh, exchange instead, and maybe it will be a little bit better for everyone. I do agree, so I totally yeah. agree, absolutely. It's interesting, and it's an interesting concept. Mm. Interesting. Um, yeah. so, so, but how would that work, you think, with a, with a cloud? Do you think people will enter? Do people dare to enter that sort of like mobility room? Well, I think th uh, that was why I wanted to place it in the middle of everything, so you would have to pass by it. It's mm. not like, because in this, in this case, the cultural house is actually just placed. I mean, they are like almost touching each other. Mm. However, there were like a lot of people in the shopping mall, but not so many people in the cultural house. And in this way, maybe you would just pass by, you would lend a book in the library while you were looking for a new sweater. Mm. So, mm. anyway. Mm. More culture, uh, less shopping, uh, more meetings. More meetings. More meetings. Yeah. Yeah, do you think we have enough meetings of today in our work life today? No, too much meeting, yeah. Too many meetings? <laughs> yes. Too little coffee then? Yeah, too little coffee. Too little <laughs> coffee. But I think this is very good because it's like this combination of things and we, our name is Combine and we try yeah. to combine different things that maybe today you need to combine and you need to combine exercise with children care and combination yeah. work and coffee drinking and exactly. eating. Exactly. I believe in that as well. It seems like much. you're trying to, to design the super office. Do you, I mean, like with the, uh, the sound isolation is so to totally perfect and everything's sleek and working. Do you think there's too much culture or, or too much interference in our workspaces? Do you think that? Sorry, too much interference? Interference with like noise and people and, and other things that are distracting you. Distractions. I, I think our, our office is a bad example because we use it like an ex experiment lab. So, so every idea that comes up, coming up. So okay, so you like distractions? Definitely. Yes. Do you like distractions, Robert? I like distractions, yes. Yeah, distraction <laughs> is good for, for creativity, right? Isn't I it? enjoy to have a rather uh, small um, company because uh, the bigger the company, the more meetings you have and the more resumes you have to read after meetings. Mm. So uh, mm. I think that's an advantage of being not too big and mm. flexible. Would you go to uh, Monica's Galleria with the clouds and, and try a sweater, land the book and have a meeting? Uh, well, if the clouds are there, I would probably go there. Otherwise, uh, I'm not so sure if <laughs> 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 you have enough books and tackle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Stefan, uh, yeah. you asked about an office. Uh, yes. We had pictures taken when we were finished with the renovation mm. and we sent it out and they wrote about it on the blogs on the internet mm. and there was a comment saying that this must be the worst environment ever inten intentionally created by humankind. <laughs> <laughs> so Why do you think they said that? Why do you think they said that? It looks very minimal and It's and very minimal, yeah. It's very white and clean and yeah. you know, sharp lights. I've seen the office, of course, so yeah, I've seen it. So we are a bad So you example. go for coffee elsewhere <laughs> and for creativity yeah, yeah. and efficient work. Because some people think that as well. I remember in a meeting, a few Norwegian guys actually said that the meeting rooms should be cold, so you don't spend so much time there. You should actually like go into a meeting room, be cold, frozen, then get out of there, take a quick decision and go have coffee somewhere else. I don't know if we should take coffee after this, but I think our session here is about to round up, actually. We spent 45 minutes here on stage on this little uh, talk show here. Um, you can actually, if you are interested, this session is available on the web. You can always go to the website and also to, to Facebook. Uh, there's a community f there as well. And also, Hello has its own exhibition all the way down in the A hall. It's A39 colon 20, I think it is. So if you want to know more about new ideas, about meetings, and saying hello, ways of saying hello simply, I guess. 
Well, with that, Inge, I think we don't say hello. We say goodbye. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much, my panel. Thank you. Thank you. She's walking down the street, blind to every eye she meets. Do you think you'll be the guy to make the queen of the angels sigh? Hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your name? Hello, I love you. Let me jump in your game.